We are back with the tales of the Shaman Mask and its funny spikes, which randomly happened to make an entire moon fall down within three days only, and yet still failed to achieve its goal. I don't know which is more impressive. Making a moon drop within three days only, or getting stopped even in that amount of time? The answer is obviously that it doesn't matter. To speedrunners at least, as we will once again compare the normal way of playing the game to the way that speedrunners deal with certain sections. This time we'll have a closer look at Woodfall Temple. We're starting off by using the Deku Mask to fly our way to the next room using the Deku Flowers. A chest being next to one of the Deku Flowers kindly introduces us to the stray fairies that can also be found in temples. From here on, we don't really have a lot of options. The next platform is too far away, and the door down the wooden path is locked. The only option we have is to go down and head to the right, where we then use a Deku Flower to get our first small key, which we can use to head back into the main room of the dungeon and unlock pretty much the only door that is closed by a lock pad in the entire temple, apart from the boss door. Once in there, we push the block, run around the block, push it back again and use a Deku Stick to light up a torch, and then use that one to make it all the way to the top platforms, where we then burn a web and make it to the dark room. Once there, we only need to light all the torches to proceed to the Dragonfly platform room, which will finally lead us to the other side of the main room. Here we can enter the door on the left, follow the path and find a very angry Denolfos. With three hearts only, this fight can be a bit of a pain, since this enemy deals a good amount of damage. It is defeated after four hits, and we finally earned ourselves the bow. Okay, that really took some time. Majora's Mask runs are sort of divided nowadays between the Japanese version, which has the hookshot at this point but no Deku Mask, and the English version, which skips the hookshot entirely but instead has the Deku Mask at this point. Overall, the speedrun in the English version is a lot harder, but also a little bit faster. So, obviously, we'll use the English version for the comparison. Woodfall Temple is the first temple that the run beats, so the only items we have are the Deku Mask, the Ocarina, Bombs and Bomb Chews. We start by jumping off the platform right at the start and head towards the third platform, on which we can perform a backflip to get on top. Here we use the Deku Flower to get to the main room of the temple. Once we're here, we perform a bomb hover and a mega flip to land on top of the torch and can easily make our way to the bow room. Here we face the Denolfos, and unlucky for him, jump slashes deal twice the damage than normal strikes do. So after two well-timed jump slashes, the Denolfos goes down, we get our precious bow and pretty much skipped off of the temple already. From here on, it's fairly straightforward. Once we leave this room, we see an eye on the other side of the room, which can be shot with the bow. We get onto the platform in the middle of the room, shoot the eye which lifts the platform, and we can head to the next boss fight, the Gecko. This fight is more complicated than the previous one and requires the player to think a little instead of just mindlessly poking the enemy to death. The vulnerable point in this fight is the belly of the turtle, which will make the gecko crawl up the walls. At this point you can shoot him with arrows and you can actually damage him. In order to get him off the turtle though, you have two options. We can either use the Deku flowers in the ground and wait for the turtle to go over them in order to hit the turtle's belly, or we can use bombs, which will also damage the turtle's belly, flip it over and make the gecko vulnerable. After shooting it with several arrows, we finally get access to the boss key. From here on we leave the room, head back to the main room in which we're given the hint that we can somehow light the torch on the wooden flower in the center of the room. After shooting an arrow through the torches on the flower in the center, the poisonous water clears up and the flower lifts up to the other platform's height, which will allow us to jump on it. One last fire arrow to light another torch from here will open the door to the last room of the temple, which we can now enter. In here we just have to use a Deku Flower, hit the crystal switch with an arrow which will temporarily unlock another Deku Flower, and fly to the boss room. After we obtain the bow, we head back to the main room of the temple and go upstairs. We get infinite sword glitch and use bombs and bomb chews to hover onto the pillars on the side. After a couple of hovers, we can use the Zora mask in order to grab the ledge behind us a little earlier. This is faster and saves explosives. Now we roll towards the left ledge next to the wall, which will make Link grab the ledge of the pillar. As Link starts the grab, we need to hit Z target during the very first frame of the animation. This will invert the animation and make Link clip inside the pillar, which we can then use to let go of the ledge and stand inside the pillar, giving us the opportunity to go out of bounds. We aim a little bit to the left, get infinite sword glitch again and use bomb hovers to go out of bounds. 
After nine hovers, we're far enough back to perform another mega flip, which will now bring us to Adolwa, as loading zones are always existent, even with the rooms themselves being unloaded. The Adolwa fight is a really obnoxious one. He starts off fairly simple. We use an arrow to stun him and then attack him. After he took a couple of hits, his second phase starts, in which he will summon bugs and butterflies and occasionally summon a fire circle, which we can't get out of. The butterflies and bugs make it really hard not to take damage and actually getting to Adolwa himself. However, he is finally defeated after taking a few more hits and we get our well-deserved heart container and Adolwa's remains. Unlucky for us, power crouch stabs are patched in the English version of the game, so we have to use quick spins by spinning the stick and hitting B. The fight starts off the usual way. We stun Adolwa with an arrow and then spam quick spins. If done correctly and with a little luck when it comes to the timing, we can kill him before he jumps away again. However, if he jumps away, we can just stun him again and finish him off. Usually this strategy is quick enough to not let him start a second phase at all. And if he does, you definitely need some practice in this fight. Thank you for watching our little comparison on the strategies between the speedrunners and the casual ways in the Woodfall Temple. You hit the red little button anyway already, so no need to advertise that. And obviously, you also hit the bell to get notifications. So actually, I have no idea why I'm still talking.